today we're going to be talking about Mars and various facts and tidbits about this beautiful planet that is very close to our home and is probably going to be one of the first places we decide to colonize. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> And let's actually start our adventure here on Earth. We're going to use Space Engine today to try to travel to Mars while talking a little bit more about it and exploring some of the features in the game uh, and also just talk about the planet in general. Now, the interesting thing about Space Engine is that there is actually a way to um, update your textures so that you actually get all of the features of Martian surface uh, relatively accurately up to about, I think it's something like one pixel per hundred meters, meaning that you can s you can see and explore the bigger features like the mountains and volcanoes, but unfortunately you won't be able to see the infamous face of Mars, which is what I really wanted to show you in this video, but unfortunately it's not there. Anyway, so let's select Mars and travel there right now. And because the trip to Mars would actually take us over six months, we are going to cheat a little bit and just click this button right here that will help us travel there almost instantly. So here we go. This is Mars and we are now orbiting around it. So as you may know or may not know, uh, Mars actually has two moons and they're actually right here. There's one called Deimos and one called Phobos. And both of these moons were uh, accidentally predicted by... Jonathan Swift, a famous writer who accidentally predicted these two uh, moons in his book called Gulliver's Traveler. He actually wrote about them and he named them and then it just so happens that Mars did have these two moons and uh, both of them are very small, they're actually asteroid-like and probably were asteroids a long time ago and were captured by Mars. And their names, Phobos, which means fear, and Deimos, which means panic, are basically uh, from Roman mythology, where fear and panic usually accompanied Mars, which is the god of war, to, to battle. Basically, fear, panic, and war, they kind of come together. All right, so let's come closer to Mars and let's explore some of its features. Uh, so interestingly, a lot of missions to Mars actually failed. Over half missions actually failed and only about 16 missions were officially considered to be successful out of about 40 different missions to date. Now right now we're standing on the surface and unfortunately the surface is not procedurally generated but you can see some of the features here and these are actual real features that are on Mars. And also it just so happens where as, if we look into the sky we'll see there's a slight alignment of planets. There's Venus. Uh, there's also Mercury and Jupiter alignment that you can see in, in the Martian sky right now. Now, what about the temperature? How cold does it get here? Well, it gets to about minus 120 degrees Celsius in the winter on the dark side, but it also gets to about 24 degrees Celsius in the summer on the bright side. So the temperature variation is actually very large. And let's actually fly across the surface and look at some of the features. And you know, you'll notice that there's actually quite a lot of meteorite impacts. And a lot of these impacts, they actually cause the Martian rocks to fly into the outer space. And some of them fall back on our planet. And there's, um, there's actually 12 known Martian meteorites that we found in, in Antarctica, which we now can study and find out more about Martian soil and Martian... Uh, uh, geography, but also Martian past. And what's interesting, one of them is actually very controversial. Uh, it's called ALH84001, also known as Allen Hills Meteorite. And this meteorite landed on Earth about 13,000 years ago, and uh, scientists have found signs of what looked like uh, bacterial activity, but some scientists don't really know what it's from. And so uh, it did create a bit of uh, a controversy a few years ago where some scientists said it is not life and some scientists said it is possibly life related. And speaking of life, actually for many years people thought that Mars has intelligent life. And interestingly, um, all of this came from discovery of these grooves and channels right here. And also right, where are they? Here they are, right here. So because of these channels, uh, back in the days, uh, an Italian astronomer called Giovanni Schiaparelli, he actually believed that these were possibly made by uh, some sort of a alien race and and he named them Canali. And then uh, a British astronomer, Percival Lowell, 
actually mistranslated the word as uh, the word as channels, and so they actually thought these were constructed to literally transport um, ice or, or water from northern and, and south poles to to the middle of the region, uh, you know, to to provide water basically. But what's really interesting is that in um, 1898, H.G. Uh, Wells, a famous science fiction writer, wrote a book called uh, The War of the Worlds. And then in 1938, in the United States, this book was actually broadcasted on the radio and someone read the book with very dramatic voice and a lot of really dramatic um, special effects and so on and so forth. And what's interesting is that people actually believed it and the entire country, the entire country panicked. People thought the Martians are attacking and the, the world was about to end because the Earth was about to be taken over by the Martians. But obviously it was just a, a reading of a book that just happened to be a little bit too dramatized for or over dramatized for, for some people. All right, let's talk about some of the features here. So like I said, I could not really show you the face of, of Mars, which is kind of famous, but I can show you some other really cool things. We're gonna start with the biggest mountain slash the biggest volcano in the solar system. And that volcano is called uh, Olympus Mons. Now it's going to be relatively easy to find it once I position myself where I can see the sun. And there's the sun right there. So we're going to use the sun as a kind of a guidance here and run the time until we see a very, very large object on the surface, which will most likely be uh, Olympus Mons. And let's just wait and see if we can find it without really even trying to use the map. Now, speaking of maps, Google Maps actually has a Martian Google map that you can use. And it's just, uh, I, I believe it's maps.google.com um, slash Mars, where you can actually explore a Martian surface uh, by using Google Maps, which actually is very accurate. So, all right, you can kind of tell that there's a very, very large protrusion right here. And this is actually one of the very large volcanoes on the, on the Martian surface. And it's actually not the largest one, even though this looks pretty big. It's this right here, this unusually shaped object that is actually the largest mountain and the largest volcano in the solar system. It's approximately 600 kilometers or 400 miles across. And that's basically the size of like France, I guess. And it is about 25 kilometers or what is that, 17 miles uh, in, in height. So if I were to try to land on it, you would see how big it is. Um, and what you also see is uh, there's actually a very interesting effect because there's so much ice on the surface, it, it is sort of whitish. It's actually brighter and it reflects more light uh, than other objects on Mars, uh, except for polar, polar caps, of course. And so this object was actually known for a very long time because of its... Uh, basically because of the ice on the surface. All right, so this is what it kind of looks like. It doesn't really look like an actual volcano. It's more of a volcano similar to those you find in, in places like Hawaii. Uh, so it's called a shield vol volcano. It's a very large, very long, but also very tall uh, piece of land, I guess. And so this is what it kind of looks like. And this is essentially the biggest volcano in the solar system. And it's uh, the second biggest mountain. There's actually a mountain that's even bigger on, on Vesta, an uh, asteroid that orbits uh, in, in the region be behind Mars. It's the region be between Mars and Jupiter. All right, so let's move away from Olympus Mons and let's go explore the next interesting feature. And it's called Noctis Labyrinthus, or also known as Labyrinth of the Night. Now, this is it right here. And essentially, it's known as, as the largest natural labyrinth in solar system. I'm not sure if there's any anything larger that we may find in the future, but we actually may. But basically, this is it. It's essentially uh, kind of like the canals, I guess, kind of like the channels. But in, in a sense, it, it is a labyrinth. If you start walking here, it's going to be really, really hard to find a way out because there's just so many different uh, turns, so many different twists and so on. And if you actually get out of this labyrinth, if you keep walking this way, you'll find yourself in another really famous feature, which is actually known as the largest canyon in, in the solar system called Valles Marineris. So we're actually going to try to fly through it. And this, this uh, particular um, canyon is ridiculously large. It is very, very long. It's about four kilometers deep and is larger than anything we have on our planet. So this is it. It's basically a very, very long, empty 
kind of like a riverbed, I guess, but it's it, it's not really a, ri a riverbed because it was formed by um, either a very large eruption or some sort of a split of tectonic plates when Mars was still very active. It's not active anymore, but it, it used to be very active in the past. And so this, this is kind of what it looks like from space. And we can easily see this even from our planet if we use a telescope. And you may also notice that there's actually a lot of clouds and atmospheric activity here. And this brings me to my next point. Uh, Mars has a really, really, really strong dust storms. It actually has the strongest dust storms in solar system. And uh, wind speeds can reach speeds of 250 miles or about 300, 400 kilometers per hour. Um, or essentially, uh, what if you watch the movie Martian, it does kind of represent it very realistically. So these dust storms can be quite dangerous. They can pick up large rocks and large pieces of um, earth and throw it at you and basically kill you. But usually these dust storms only happen when Mars is the closest to the sun, so it only occurs about every uh, once every two years. Now, if we start moving a little bit to the north and to the south, we will reach the uh, the polar caps, and this is one of them. And Mars, except for Earth, uh, is the only other planet that actually has polar caps. No other planet has them. And here we also notice seasons. So in other words, uh, these polar caps change in size depending on what season it is. Uh, and interestingly, uh, at the same time, these polar caps, we actually thought they contained carbon dioxide, that it was basically frozen carbon dioxide, but it's actually not. For the most part, this is actually water, frozen water. There's a little bit of carbon dioxide in them, but it's mostly water. And if you were to melt all of this and also all of the other polar caps uh, on the other side, where is it? Let's find it. Oh, you can see it because it's a, it's in the dark side. Anyway, so the, if you were to melt both of them at the same time, um, the entire Martian surface would actually be covered in water, and the average depth would be about 12 meters, or approximately uh, 24 feet. But because these polar caps always change in size, we now are absolutely sure that there are actually seasons on Mars, so there's definitely winter and there's definitely summer, and possibly even some other seasons, but they do last twice as long because uh, Martian orbit takes about 687 days to orbit around the Sun. Now, one thing Mars doesn't have, and this is actually the most important discovery of November 2015, uh, which is when I'm making this video, uh, it, and this is a conclusive discovery that is absolutely certain now, is that Mars does not really have um, uh, strong magnetic fields like our, our planet does, and our magnetic field is, is based on uh, the circulation of um, iron in, inside our core, inside our planet. Uh, Mars doesn't have that. It does have a little bit of magnetic field from the surface. Uh, on the surface uh, of the actual planet, there's a bit of a magnetic field, but it's not enough to protect the atmosphere from being uh, bombarded by solar radiation. So because of the sun, sun, because of the solar flares, Mars has most likely lost its atmosphere that way. So there was used to be a lot of atmosphere on Mars, but now it's all gone because it just didn't have any magnetic field to protect it. And the other really important discovery uh, of 2015, and actually probably the most important discovery of the last decade, is that there, we now know there is liquid water on Mars. Uh, it's uh, it's not always liquid. It, it's sort of not really even water. It's more of a brine, which basically is very, very salty water. But we have discovered it, and we've seen signs of it on the surface. So there's a lot of hope that maybe we'll even find life. All right, let's talk a little bit about fun facts as well. So one fun fact is that Mars is the only planet in the solar system and possibly even the universe entirely populated by robots. That's right. There are actually seven of them on the surface. And one of them, Curiosity, that's the name of the mission, on August 5th of every year, Curiosity rover starts sending its own birthday song. And it's really, really sad, but also really, really inspiring because it gives us hope that one day someone else will be singing the song with it on the same date. So yes, seven robots on, on Mars and they're all still kind of active and they're still exploring this beautiful planet. Now one thing I forgot to mention is the color. Why is Mars so reddish orange? And that's of course because of iron rust on the surface. Uh, iron oxide produces this color and 
essentially this is why the planet is red. It's a little bit of different type of red from other planets. Uh, on many other planets, like for example Pluto, redness comes from something completely diff different. It's actually from interaction of the sun with methane. Now on Mars, it is not from that, it's just from iron. And speaking of Martian soil, in the movie The Martian, and I hope I'm not spoiling this for you, but in the movie, the main protagonist actually uses potatoes and tries to grow potatoes in, in, in the ground, and he survives on those potatoes using Martian soil. But here's an interesting fact. Actually, not potatoes, but asparagus would be the best sort of plant to take with you on Mars, because uh, it would definitely grow on Mars quite easily. So asparagus is the plant of choice for Martian soil. But of course, no human would possibly survive on the surface without a, a spacesuit because the atmospheric pressure here, and you can kind of see it right here, it's so low that the oxygen bubbles inside of your body would actually evaporate and that would probably kill you because you would just suffocate to death. Now, while I'm looking into the skies here, I just wanted to mention that in 1965, one of the first missions to Mars, and this was Mariner 4 mission, actually took beautiful pictures of this planet. But what they saw is this. They saw an empty, dry planet. And this was so disappointing for many scientists. Actually, a lot of them wrote articles about it saying, very disappointing that there is actually no vegetation and no water and no oceans on this planet. They actually expected to find all of that and they found a dry desert instead. And this is actually a pretty cool alignment in the sky, but one of those uh, objects is actually Phobos, I believe. So let's, let's accelerate time and see what happens. Yeah, there you go. That's actually one of the moons of Mars and three others. And those three other objects are Jupiter, Mercury and Venus. And they're in alignment on on the horizon uh, of Mars. All right, beautiful sunset. And now we're in darkness of Martian night. So this is going to get really, really cold. Like I mentioned before, minus 120 degrees Celsius. Now, the first person to actually look at the surface of Mars was Galileo Galilei, and he did it in 1609. So essentially 400 years ago, uh, he, he was able to observe this planet using his telescope. And so it took us 400 years to actually finally reach this planet and to investigate it and to find out more about it. But the cool thing about the more recent missions to Mars is that some countries, like for example India, found really, really cheap, really successful ways of reaching this planet at a fraction of, an, of a cost. India is actually the first country in the world to successfully launch a Martian mission on the first try and to not only launch it, but to launch it at about a tenth of a cost of a normal mission to Mars. So very likely there's a high chance that a manned mission to Mars might not be actually from, from China or from Russia or from NASA, but it might actually be from India. And this is actually really exciting because India is not really a country you think of when you think of space race. And honestly, I'm cheering for them because if they manage to land on Mars and bring the first people to Mars, they will definitely become the new space superpower, some, something that no one actually expected at all. But the fact that they were able to launch this very successful mission earlier in the year really gives me hope that they might be the ones, they might be the new Martian superpower that will eventually land here. And as I'm standing on the surface of Phobos, one of the moons of Mars, and watching Mars below me, I would like to thank you for watching, and look at that, it is Olympus Mons, and it's gone. Uh, and please subscribe if you still haven't, like this video if you enjoyed learning more about Mars, and also check out Space Engine, if you don't know what this is, it's an absolutely free space simulator. The link for this game, or I guess simulator, is in the description below. There's also a link for the textures that I've used for this Martian simulation that you can download as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out some of the other videos I did on space, universe, science, and math, and other stuff. Enjoy this last Martian view as we're going to fly away from this beautiful terrestrial planet and return back home to Earth. Goodbye, Mars, and see you soon when we land and colonize you. Give me later, guys, and bye-bye.